look at your own opinions and be quite aggressive on what you're saying, what you do, uh, what you say to other people. Um, because a lot of the time, the way the media and everything's manipulated these days, it's an aggressive, negative world. Um, also, there's misinformation. If you look at the whole immigration push in the UK, um, it's a bit like Nazi Germany in the way it's pushed, um, as if like uh, the immigrants are taking all the jobs and everything else. The reality is an economy grows with population. Um, it just naturally does. Also, it's not the main issue. The main issue is high unemployment, high debt, and an artificially inflated uh, property market that is supporting some of this debt. Um, it's a vicious circle, and they can't deal with those. So that's why politicians go, for, politicians and media um, go for the immigrants. It's an easy target. That's a typical example of negative. Um, media you don't have to get into that but the fact the fact is a lot of your daily life can be affected by this um, people are a bit more aggressive you, your TV tells everybody to F you and everything on a regular basis stuff I never had when I was a child I don't remember the the amount of abuse um, the abuse levels on the TV today seem horrendous from when compared to when I was a child has it any positive impact? I don't think so. That's why I don't watch TV most of the time. Um, even the kids' cartoons seem a bit bizarre these days. I, I mean, okay, when I was a kid, you had Tom and Jerry hacking each other apart. But at least it made sense. They were just running around the house. Uh, some of this stuff like, uh, what's it? Uncle Grand Grandpa or something? Or granddad, that's a bizarre show. When is Stempy a bizarre show? <laughs> but um, anyway, going off on a tangent here. The fact is, you can have a lot of negative influences in your life. It doesn't mean you have to let them affect your life. And this is why I say analyze your own opinions and your own thoughts. Because a lot of time they're founded on instant uh, information. Um, there's somebody at work that's always seems so bloody miserable and you think right they're they're like this or like that you don't know them um i remember a guy i met years ago um he wouldn't work any overtime and stuff and the co company owner used to give him some grief about it but there's a whole thing about it he went and approached him the fact was his wife was dying of cancer um he was his values had changed. He he took every day as a blessing and wanted to be home with his wife. So he would work. He would be in early. He would start because um, I mean we started work about five six a.m. He would start early and he'd be gone by lunchtime. And then it's like, aren't you working today? You know, getting grief off the boss. The boss had never even engaged with the guy to find out why he goes early. Just complaining about the fact he goes early. So, what was his opinion based on? The guy was lazy. It wasn't based on the fact that his wife was dying. And that's why evaluating your own opinions is important. Because there is stuff that goes on in people's lives you're not aware of. And there is stuff that people would not engage with you because they don't see it as your problem. But also, they may not engage with you because you're not approachable. I mean, aren't People find it difficult to approach from me because I'm quite a blunt person. Um, it's just the way I am. I can't change that. Because <laughs> um, an example, there was a Facebook group the other day where somebody was asking for a bit of support within the, the British expat community of the Philipp uh, of Spain, and the, the daughter's got autism. And every comment in there was, well, if you don't like it, go home. That, that whole negative uh, attitude that these Brits overseas sometimes have. Um, at which point, I could have told, gone in there aggressively and dealt with it. But what did I do? I, I stated the fact is, it doesn't matter where you are from 
in the EU, your passport does not state EU, it states, uh, sorry, UK, it states EU. You're part of the EU community. It doesn't matter where they came from. If they're from the EU, then they're entitled to everything in the EU. In the same way, when you come to Spain from Britain and complain about um, people from Britain in Spain, you're not uh, one of the people that complain in Britain about immigrants, yet here you are in Spain. And just leave it at that. It wasn't swearing or getting annoyed with them. It was just stating, stating a few facts to them that turned around and it just went flat. What you did have was an engagement with several women um, with children with autism. They may not have talked to each other if I hadn't have gone in there and just uh, basically stopped people abusing this poor woman with her, enough problems with her child's education. So diplomatically I went in there and just stated a few facts. My opinion, what was my opinion on it? Well my opinion was don't be so hypocritical um, about people in foreign countries when you're actually from a foreign country yourself living in Spain. It's even worse when you come from this, it's, uh, the, <laughs> they're both from the UK. Um, but that that is something about certain generations. Um, but I didn't go there and you know really hammer into them. The fact is, once they could see what I was talking about, it just silenced it. That sort of thing is how to deal with um, difficult situations because you're not trying to destroy people you're trying to get them to see it from another perspective you're trying to get them to understand what you're talking about without actually saying you're an idiot or something you're just trying to get them to understand your view your perspective but also have it found from knowledge um, because a lot of time opinions are formed based on what people see think or whatever and knowledge is always the last um, thing people bother with but that knowledge and experience is the reality of being right I'll give you an example there's a drone um, I'm interested in at the moment is a thousand dollars of a pre-order today I can get it for 500 I'll, and I'll get it next year I looked at it and I love it <laughs> and I can see why I want it <laughs> I don't need it which is you know it gets that you know say the want and need thing um, but also I sat there and thought well if I paid $500 for it now by the time I get it there'll be other drones on the market which will be better than it without a doubt because if you look at the way drones have developed over the last 16 months they're leaping ahead in technology um, so the fact is that five that thousand dollar drone today may only be worth five hundred next year because technology has moved on, in my opinion. Um, but as you can hear, the way I explain it, you'll go, well, that makes sense. But if I said the same in a different way, it's no point buying that; it's not worth it. Which is the sort of thing you may get on the forum. Then you can see why some people argue with each other because they go yeah but you get a half price yeah but it's just not worth it there's no justification there's no knowledge put in there there's no uh, information that actually say in my opinion I think by next year the technology would have moved on and there'll be better models out there unless they're going to update it and keep it up to date with the latest technologies it's going to become obsolete before it's even arrived that's my opinion, but at the same time, there's some information there that says, well, you may be right, you may be wrong. But at the same time, I could take on board somebody saying, well, I don't think we're going to move that far forward. It's still only $500. You know, you just, it's opinions. But the whole point is not to get tied up on them. Don't get tied up on opinions as facts either. Um, this is one of the reasons expats argue so much. If somebody, like the whole thing where people go, if you want to have a small fortune in the Philippines, start with a large one. Now the first thing is, everybody says it. Um, 
fact is, I'll, nobody ever turns around and says, well, the reason that's relevant to most people is they're not business people. Um, they also start businesses without any local knowledge. Um, they also would fail in their own country of any business because they do not have the ability to run a business. Those sort of things are often facts. The percentages won't, I can't give you, but the reality is um, because the fact is they haven't run a business before, so they will fail or very likely fail. But that's the same anywhere on the planet. So if you want to start with a, if you want a big fortune or even a small fortune in the Philippines, don't just throw money at it because the fact is they've actually got that scenario wrong to start with. You don't throw money at ideas in the Philippines. You start with small projects the same way the locals do. Like I explained in another video about the um, the pace of pacing machines, we started with one. That's fully booked, so we get another one, paid for by the profit from the first one. And then another one, another one. And then you get to a point where it's not making as much money, so you go, right, we don't want another one, we'll just have the five. We didn't go out and buy 20 machines, no, then go, oh, only five of them get used. That's my own opinion. But it also shows that the the whole analogy of start with a big fortune and end up with a small one is actually wrong because you should actually just start with small ideas and build them up to a small um, income and then possibly a larger fortune over time. The complete reverse of what people are saying, which means that the whole idea of going with a large amount of money is wrong in the first place in my opinion. Yeah.